Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service this morning. It is a pleasure, as always, to see your faces, whether I'm seeing them in person or knowing that you will be watching us later in the week or from the comfort of your home this morning. But it is a good day, and we are glad you are here. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number from the Faith We Sing book, hymn number 2236. I invite you to stand and join with us. Please join with me in our call to worship. Here in this place, there are no foreigners. We're all more welcome in God's house. Here in this worship, there is only acceptance. For love is the language of faith. Here in our lives, there are no divisions. For God dwells in each of us. Come, let us worship in unity and love. We worship you, our God, in humility and gratitude. Amen. You may be seated. Take a few minutes here to look through what's going on in our church over the next week. We've got a couple of meetings coming up um, this week, so if you are part of the fundraising task force, CCN, reconciling our trustees. Um, Well, just trustees is the week after, so the first three are this week. Uh, Continuing to look for a youth director and a substitute piano organ player. So again, any names you might know, um, pass them on to Fran Bowman. Uh, Today is the second Sunday of a new member orientation. So if you went last week or didn't and you're interested in knowing a little bit more about our church or becoming a member, The quiet room is downstairs from the fellowship hall, kind of all the way back. Time and talent survey came out in the D's and O's, so that is something that 
nominations is hoping that you will fill out and turn into the church office so as they get started in their work of putting together committees for next year that if you have an interest in something they can contact you and know that uh, might be a, a hopeful answer there annual report by committee chairs and members um, if you haven't picked one up and you are a committee chair um, check with the office about getting one i think i still saw some out in the north x but again, something for our annual church conference to just kind of get that year-end submission in. World Communion Sunday is coming up Sunday, October 6th. Its purpose is to promote and celebrate our oneness in Christ with all of our Christian siblings around the world through Holy Communion. So if you have any traditional clothes that represent uh, your nationality or uh, country that you identify with please feel free to wear them and if you have any special food that goes with that uh, bring that to our coffee fellowship fall garden party coming up october 19th um, always fun usually a potluck so cc is the one to contact if you have any questions about that and uh, I know Olivia talked about it last week and it sounds like it's gonna be a go. We are going to have a Halloween bash here uh, with some crafts games and is, that is on Halloween. Yep. On Halloween. So uh, see Olivia um, to sign up to help or to get any more questions or answers about what's going on in that day. Do we have any further announcements? Dave. Hi, Polly. We probably don't have to make this announcement, but when we say we're looking for a substitute piano organ player, we're all very thankful that Greg is a master at our organ, but we really don't require our piano players to yeah. play organ. So if you know somebody that you're suggesting that might want to play piano, they might be scared if they heard, oh, I have to play organ. No, no, we'd love to have a piano player. We love our Greg on the organ. Thank you, Dave. Katie. Um, I have an announcement about Voyagers. We will be meeting on October 26th uh, here, and it will be the Hope House Fashion Show. We'll have sign-ups starting today. We have brought some clothes from Hope House that we have chosen. They're down in the choir room, so if anyone is interested in being a model, please go down <laughs> after church and pick out what you would like to wear. Also, if anyone in the church sees them, do not remove those clothes and bring them back to Hope House. They came from Hope House <laughs> to here. So please do not return them. So we're looking for models. It's going to be a fun time. So. Uh, everyone put the 26th of October on your calendar at 11.30, and um, I think that's it. All right, Jeanette. Okay, we have several things from the um, uh, Reconciling Committee. Um, if you noticed on the um, church's Facebook page, we did celebrate the Bisexual Awareness Week last week. We have, what? Well, this week, okay, it's around this time. Um, and then we have our meeting on Wednesday and uh, I am asking community members to come in. I'm hosting a meeting on Thursday here um, and I'm hoping to get PFLAG to serve our community. Um, we have a lot of really cool resources that I'm trying to put together for our LGBT community at large. So if you are interested in doing greater good in the community, uh, not only just the congregation, so the congregation meeting is on Wednesday for the church, but if you want to do more work in the LGBT community, that's gonna be Thursday as well. So I'm here all week. <laughs> Anything else? Well, thank you everyone and let us continue in our worship.
disciples, I'm inviting all the children and young disciples. Bible verse, let's all read together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. God will make your path straight. So, we are invited to trust God. What is trust? your mom to buy that beautiful shoes. <laughs> trust is like a strong feeling you have between another person. Uh -huh. And you believe that person is a good person. person. So you would follow, right? So that is trust. So I'm asking you if you are trusting me, okay? You are trusting me? Okay. Are you going to trust me if I... Uh, Put this here yes, and does. poke it. Yes. Oh, you trust that? Yeah, yes. And I'm not going to make you get wet. Wait, are you gonna Do you trust? Yeah. Yeah. Have you yes. Yeah. You have question? Huh? I okay. You trust me? Yeah. Okay. Can I do? It? Yeah, sure. Okay. 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 They, he trust me. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. You, you, you are running away from me. <laughs> okay. Trust, trust. Okay. Boom. No water. No water. Another one. You trust me? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Boom. No. Oops. A little bit. <laughs> okay. It is supposed not dripping. But okay. So, you know. I want to tell you that our life is like um, sometimes we don't want uh, want to be sick, right? Something we feel like sometimes we are our life is being poked because you know bad things happen. We are sad, sick, and you know we don't want our best friend to move away. But it happens, right? Pandemic. Nobody wanted a pandemic to happen, but it happens. But look at this. All right. So when you look at this, it's a little bit drizzle. But who is holding your life? Huh? Who is holding your life? There is a hand, right? Actually, that is God's hand that is holding our life. So God wants us to trust God. And follow him. Can you do it? Okay? No? Okay, you <laughs> say yes. Okay, thank you for saying yes. Come here, come here. Let's pray. Let's pray. Come here. Okay. All right, so let's make a circle. Come here. No, no. 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 Right, let's pray. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, we trust you. We trust that you will be with us even when bad things are poking through our lives. We trust that you will protect us. You will be with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Father Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, let's go to Sunday school.
Our Old Testament, <clears throat> excuse me, reading today comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, I need to seek some security for you so that it may be well with you. Now here is our kinsman, Boaz, with whose young women you have been working. See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what to do. She said to her, all that you tell me, I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did just as her mother-in-law had instructed her. When Boaz had eaten and drunk and he was in a contented mood, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. Then she came stealthily and uncovered his feet and lay down. At midnight, the man was startled and turned over, and there, lying at his feet, was a woman. He said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your cloak over your servant, for you are next of kin. He said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. This last instance of your loyalty is better than the first. You have not gone, at, gone after young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not be afraid. I will do for you all that you ask, for the assembly of my people know that you are a worthy woman. But now, though it is true that I am a near kinsman, there is another kinsman more closely related than I. Remain this night and in the morning, if he will act as next of kin for you, good, let him do it. If he is not willing to act as next of kin for you, then as the Lord lives, I will act as next of kin for you. Lie down until the morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before one person could recognize another. For he said, it must not be known that the woman came to the threshing floor. Then he said, bring the cloak that you are wearing and hold it out. So she held it and he measured out six measures of barley and put it on her back. And then he went into the city. She came to her mother-in-law who said, how did things go with you, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her, saying, He gave me this six measures of barley, for he said, Do not go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. She replied, Wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. This is the word of God for all God's people. Thanks be to God. As we come to our time where we offer back to God our tithes and our offerings, I invite you to be in prayer with me. Lord, your generosity, grace, and mercy are astounding, and we pray that the gifts we offer in worship and throughout the week might be used in your name. Help us to be generous with our money, but also with our talents and time. 
Strengthen us to recognize your blessings, to be grateful, and to respond accordingly. Amen. I invite the ushers forward. share our joys and concerns. I, had a, I have a really pleasant uh, surprise this morning. Uh, my old, old friend from Korea um, came, Mr. Sang Bong Han. <laughs> he visited us. It's been uh, 40 years to see him uh, like this. And he says he's a, a skydive diving instructor or something. <laughs> yeah, he's helping people in USA. So, wow, I didn't know. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so any, oh, we um, have been praying for Larry Sheffer and he's still in the hospital and he had lots of tests and still they are trying to figure out. Uh, so we will continue to pray for Larry uh, for his lung and kidney, basically. Okay, any other joys and concerns you wanna share, uh, Olivia? Um, I just wanna say thank you for your prayers for my furry family members. Um, uh, my cat is not out of the weeds, uh, but the progress is glacial, but it's upward. So I'm hopeful that we can get him to a place of comfort and quality of life for a little while longer. Um, so thankful for that. Um, and then the dog is okay. He's just being very picky and stubborn. So <laughs> if you have any recommendations um, for stubborn dogs, um, I'll be in the fellowship hall. Our prayers and thanks to God. Oh, yeah. Honey? Uh, just a joy that my four brothers and sisters and I got together this week. My brother was 
in town uh, for a get together with his buddies in Livermore from Florida and my sister was up from San Diego for her 40th, um, no 50th uh, high school reunion so we had a great gathering and my other two sisters were who were somewhat local were here at my house and pretty amazing sometimes to get all five siblings together. Wow. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, I saw Karen. Oh, Joyce and Karen. I'd like to ask for prayers for my friend Kathy, who has COVID, severe case, and is in the hospital, and, but she's gradually starting to get better. Our prayers for Kathy. And Karen over there. Oh, okay. There are two more over there. two-parter one is a joy um, as you know um, my husband Joe has been undergoing treatment for prostate cancer and he concluded their radiation part of the treatment quite a while ago he still has more than a year and a half of medication that isn't any fun but uh, still when uh, we were visiting Larry Schaefer on the fourth floor Joe challenged me to a race up the stairs and he almost caught up with me <laughs> <laughs> So he's doing quite well. Um, unfortunately, the concern that I have is a request for prayers for our friend and neighbor, Jim Kennedy, whose wife of 44 years, Janie, passed away yesterday. Um, and so it is somewhat of, a, somewhat of a celebration for Janie, who uh, has not been well for many, many, many years and now is uh, at rest and at peace and experiencing some relief from the body that did not work very well for a long time. But uh, prayers for Jim, who now returns to a very empty house and um, adjusting to his new life. Our prayers. Okay, Melissa? I just, I want to ask prayers for the immigrant community in the United States, whether they're here legally, paperwork, or they're undocumented. They come here for a promise, for a hope that the U.S. has offered people for decades. Um, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. And I pray for the people who speak out against them in their ignorance and that I, I pray that their hearts are opened to the struggles that that immigrants face in their their home country and and realize all of the issues that drive them to the United States um, and this is especially relevant obviously for the the Haitian immigrants right now um, who have come under intense fire due to some very false rhetoric. And so I pray for the people, both who are having to, to deal with the fallout from that and the people who continue to spread and, and believe this false rhetoric. Um, I, I pray that they do a little research and, and realize that not everything that they hear people say is true. Um, and, uh, and I pray that we can come together as a nation and, and support everybody who needs that support. Our prayers. My turn. Uh, oh, wait, no, you go first. Okay, Michael, you go. Yes. Uh, Linda Barnhill is pretty ill right now, just uh, probably a virus. She has not tested uh, for COVID yet, but anyway, she's been really sick this weekend. So oh. prayers for Linda. Prayers for Linda. And Jeanette? I'm just bursting with joy that I have to share. Um, a couple of things, my parents just got home last night. Uh, my globe trekking, trekking parents came back from Italy um, and they say that they're all healthy, so hopefully they are. Um, I'm asking uh, prayers of guidance for our work this week um, with the LGBT community. Um, it is needed. Uh, I heard of some hate at the high school from the new GSA advisor. And um, I guess finally, uh, something that I'm just doing in my own family is I'm trying to expose my kids to different churches. And I am just so excited and I just love being here. 
You know, we're, we worship traditionally with progressive values, and I absolutely love it, the comfort, the family. And I just want to celebrate you all for, for being who you are and um, collecting here. I just absolutely love it. Thank you. Our prayers. Stevens and Daisy. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you uh, if you prayed for me while I was uh, uh, back in Indiana for my class reunion. It went really well. Um, I played the bagpipes while I was there, but I had trouble with getting them in tune because of the humidity. But that said, um, after I'd got them tuned and everything, I went back to my hotel. And um, sometimes when the Spirit leads us, we would do good to follow. And while I was heading back to the hotel, next to the hotel happened to be a cemetery. Mm. And I saw a man with his dog inside the fence. And uh, the man looked obviously like he was in distress, grieving, I don't know. He, he was upset. Um, and his dog was walking around. Anyway, I had my bagpipes in the uh, trunk of the car and they were fully assembled, and I needed the practice. Um, so I walked over to the side of the cemetery, but out of the man's view, and for whatever reason, I felt led to play Amazing Grace. Oh. And I played it, two verses of it, got, gathered the pipes up. I didn't even look at the man. I just walked back to my car. I did turn as I finally got to the hotel porch, and I could tell that the man, I, I don't know if he heard me, but for what, you know, he, <laughs> he looked, sure? I, I can tell you if you can hear the pipes 10 miles away, he yeah. certainly heard me at 50 <laughs> yards. Uh, but he was animated and kind of up and about and, you know, rubbing his dog, so I'm hoping that maybe I did some good for him. Yeah, thanks for the testimonial. <laughs> okay, Daisy. I would like to ask for prayers for my colleague, Mark Pepper, and his family. Uh, he, his son passed away tragically at age 18 last weekend. Um, so please, uh, prayers for him. Our Thank prayers you. for the family. Okay. Let's gather our minds and spirit together. Loving God, we become, we come before you in your presence. There's no secrets, there's no coerce. We are free before you and asking for our beloved ones, those who have lost their loved ones, may your comfort and peace be with them. All those immigrant communities, those who struggle, Lord, walk with them, let them know when they trust your love for all God's children. They'll be okay, and they are not alone. Oh God, we are so thankful all the blessings, the recovery and healing and reunion, and just being who we are as your children. Help us to continue to be a blessing to one another, to ourselves, and to our communities and to the world. We again pray for our national election. Let it be done respectfully, with integrity, Lord, and with love for our country. May our democracy continue to flourish through all the people's hearts guided
by your spirit, by your grace and truth. Help us to make a beloved community, loving community for all people. You gave us enough abundant blessings so that we can share our blessed life together. Help us to be generous to one another, especially to those who struggle. Let everyone know that uh, your love is always, always stronger than hate. Guide us and empower us to be the word, your word, your love, and your community. Thank you for walking with us each and every day. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's bless the world with peace. Peace be with you. One more time. Peace be with you. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 3. I invite you to stand as you are able. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Going on. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he burn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the word of God for all God's people. Thanks be to God. So let's talk about threshing floor. Okay. So it is threshing floor is a very significant symbol in the Bible. Uh, literally, it is a flat surface surface used in the daily agricultural lives for the harvest of grains before equipment and machinery was invented. This space was used to separate the grains from the chaff by manual separation like you see on the slide. The animals crush and break the sheaves of the grains on the uh, threshing floor, or people manually use sticks to break the sheaves apart. As a result, the grains would be separated from the husks. The final separation would be done by tossing the grains upon the wind, thereby finally separating those still with husk and those already edible. So symbolically, the threshing floor refers to a space of redemption in the Bible. In that space, we the grain, you the grains, are being crunched and broken down and tossed around in the wind. This space is messy and out of control sometimes and chaotic. It could be confusing and even dangerous. 
It makes you so vulnerable, exposed, and defenseless. Your fate is in the hands of the farmer, so you've got to trust him and his hands. By enduring this process, we undergo a transformation. It may be painful, uncomfortable, but it is necessary and redeeming. From inedible to edible, from unusable to useful, you are redeemed and empowered to serve your Lord and engage in life-giving ministries. So what if those grains do not want to give away their fate to the hands of the farmer, but rather they try to stay having those control? then they will not be separated from their sheaves and husks. There will be no transformation and no redemption. They need to trust. They need to trust their farmer to live a new life. They need to let go of their control so that they are given with a new living space that is called the granary, where you live, you can live a life as a redeemed soul. The famous 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous guides people to the path to redemption. So basically, they invite people to come to the threshing floor. I'm not going to read the whole 12 steps. Uh, we don't have time to do that, but I'm going to just touch a little bit in a uh, Christian version. Uh, the first step says, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives have become, had become unmanageable. So this is a confession stage, an admission of where you are. And the second step says, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. So you acknowledge here the presence of God and God's will and power to redeem us. Then the third step says, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood them, understood him. So in this step, you decide, you decide to enter into the threshing floor where you let go of your will and decide to trust the hands of God. These 12 steps of AA are the pathways toward redemption. But in Jesus' time, there were no 12 steps of recovery of AA. There were no 12 steps. That's too bad because there were so many people who loved wine. You know including Jesus. There must be so many people who might have used this 
for their recovery. But that does not mean that um, there were no people who needed redemption. There were plenty of people so desperate for redemption even in Jesus' time. So they, what did they do? They all came to John the Baptist. And John saw them and he gave them a baptism. John's baptism was baptism of water. Water That was all about repentance. His baptism required of repentance, confession of your sins, and change of your lifestyles. And people felt so good about those, and they wanted to know if John was the Messiah. And he said, oh, no, no, I'm not the Messiah. Jesus is. And John knew his cousin, Jesus. Jesus would take them beyond what his baptism of water could do. So John knew that Jesus, his baptism was baptism with the Holy Spirit. And it would take them to the threshing floor where the Holy Spirit would work on them through the wind and the fire. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, your best mind, your good will can take you to a confession and repentance and even change of lifestyles. But you will still be sitting in the driving seat and holding the driving wheel with your hands. You will not let go of them. Long, long time ago, I did this message, and then one of the congregation came to me afterwards, and she said, I will never. <laughs> let go of my driving wheel. She was so serious, so scary to let go that control. We, we are stubborn and we will still follow our will and our desires. But with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is unpredictable and very powerful and Holy Spirit guides you to some place where you are not familiar with and things happen and you are empowered to let go of your control and be able to trust the hand of God. Amen? So with the Holy Spirit, you will be sitting in a passenger seat and be able to enjoy what is happening around you, around your life. You can enjoy yourself, the family relationship, the creation, the work, and the whole world. Ruth, that's what Ruth did. So we've been reading the book of Ruth, and he, she needed redemption from her impossible situation. You know, like uh, having John's baptism of water, she could just stick to the daily labors in the field for the rest of her life. Well, she's, she experienced the generosity of people and she could just do it every day. By doing so, she did not have to lose her control 
over her daily routines. But her mother-in-law, Naomi, said to Ruth, you need, you need more, more than that for your security. You need more than that. So Naomi said to Ruth, go to threshing floor. Go to threshing floor tonight. Trust me, daughter, and listen to Boaz, our Redeemer kinsman. Well, of course, uh, women have to be really, really always careful not to become a victim of violence and abuse. But having known her mother-in-law over 10 years now, Ruth had a strong trust in Naomi and replied to her, All that you say, I will do. And Ruth entered into the threshing floor where Boaz was. It was the space where nothing's guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed. There's too many unknowns. She was so vulnerable, so scared. But she found courage and she acted out of faith and followed Naomi's instructions. But still, she must have expected to be crushed down and being tossed around in a fiery wind. Nobody knew what would happen to her. But surprisingly, Boaz was gentle, attentive, respectful, and generous, kind, and very transparent, showing all the characteristics of the fruit of the Holy Spirit as written in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Those are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Ruth was at the threshing floor, but what she experienced was not confusion or coercive demands, but rather sincere response, practical guidance, affirmations, concrete action plans, and hopeful promises. And that is what happens when we enter into the threshing floor in faith and we trust in God. Amen? That's, that's what happens. Our denomination needs redemption. So does our nation. So do our families, our loved ones, we ourselves, I myself, we all need redemption. And we are tempted to settle down without baptism of water, without going into the threshing floor. We really need trust and faith to express our honesty, courage, grace, and truth at the threshing floor. No more lies, no more husks, no more false identities, fake identities or false pride. We don't need them. Our God is calling us to enter into the threshing floor. <laughs> Do we need bo bo Botox? I'm not against Botox. <laughs> but 
We need, what we need is more than that. We need true inner peace. Truth and honesty. Beauty, inner beauty, and beautiful value systems following the way of Jesus Christ our Lord. Our church building uh, needs to be repainted because it has been 13 years since the last painting job and we see the lots of things you know falling apart but we also need the elimination of termites they have been detected in the walls of the fellowship hall uh oh it's serious so, and if we have any other structural problems, they need to be fixed. Thanks to trustees, the whole church building has been now uh, inspected and plans have been made to fix all the problems before we repaint the outside of the church buildings. What we really, really need that is that we go, we enter into threshing floor as the body of Christ. The, we, the body of Christ is more important than the building itself. As we repaint, as we fix the building inside and out, we got to pray for our body of Christ. How are we doing as a body of Christ? Are we healthy enough? If we are healthy enough, nobody can stop us from growing. Amen? Do you see the signs of healthiness here? What are those signs of healthiness? How are we doing? Do you see any termites or big broken things? Where do you see that? We need to have full inspection. We need spiritual trustees job. And I just cannot do it alone. I need I have only two eyes, but all of your eyes will be more than hundreds and thousands eyes to see. And let's get together and let's fix our brokenness. Whenever you have gathered, you gather together as a small group, just talk about it. What can we do? as a part, member of the body of Christ. That's what we need. That is the threshing floor that we need to enter together. The threshing floor is a sacred space where we enter with honesty and truth. Ruth went there, countless AA members did it. Do you know what? AA members, they enter into the threshing floor every week for the rest of their lives. That's their commitment. That's their covenant. We need to do that. So let's go together, go there to the threshing floor and see our Redeemer, Lord, Jesus Christ. And let's walk with him. Let's walk with him and follow the way of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Let's have a silent time with God.
Oh, loving God, give us your courage so that we can be honest and we can walk sincere, walk together toward your kingdom, your beloved community here and everywhere. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs>